What's up, navigation traders? Welcome to this week's video update. Today's Friday, October 11th. Hope everybody had a great week of trading. Before we jump into the alerts and positions, I just want to remind you, don't forget part three of the Iron Duck Option Spread series is this coming Tuesday, and that is October 15th at 4 p.m. Central Time. Now, if you've already registered for part one or part two, you only have to register that one time. You're already ready to go for part three. Uh, we'll send out the link, but it's just navigationtrading.com slash Iron Duck Live, which is the same broadcast room that you saw part one and part two in. Uh, but part one is in the books. Part two is in the books. Now all we have left is part three, which is going to be all about futures, including the reverse Iron Duck. So make sure you're there. Uh, already, uh, already hearing some really good success stories uh, with the Iron Duck strategy, some some bigger traders just pulling in some massive profits. So awesome stuff. And we're just getting started. So make sure you check that out. And by the way, I've gotten a couple of uh, questions about this in the community. When you log in at navigationtrading.com, all your strategy courses are right here. Okay, so you just go down and down at the very bottom is the, or close to the bottom is the Iron Duck option spread. So you open that up. We, uh, part one has already been edited into all these different sections. So it's a little bit more easier to find and go back and reference different parts. And then part two is still in its full form from just the recording. And that'll be split up uh, next week as well. So that's where you find it. It's all under Iron Duck option spread if you need to go back and reference. Um, before we jump into the alerts, let's take a look at the community, talk about who got caught being hot. This week goes to a fellow trade hacker that goes by the name Walter Burr. Uh, Walter's really just jumped in, asked a lot of great questions, helping other traders, making suggestions, just answering questions, just been awesome. Walt, keep up the good work. You got caught being hot. All right, let's jump into the alerts for the week, starting on Monday the 7th. Uh, so our first alert was an opening trade, and we sold a strangle in the British pound in forward slash 6B. Now, if you're in this trade or you've been watching the British pound, we've had a massive move the last couple days. Um, just, I mean, this thing has just taken off to the upside. Uh, now... Uh, implied volatility was already decent when we put this on, so we're still in our range. It got uh, to about a short strike here, uh, but if you look at just the put side, the untested side, still got some decent premium left in there, so we're not ready to roll those puts up quite yet. As far as time frame goes, we've got 28 days to expiration, so uh, next Friday we'll be down to that 21 days to expiration period, so if it's still kind of hanging out up there, We'll roll the puts up and potentially roll it out to the next cycle, uh, but we'll we'll just kind of play that by, by ear. Obviously, if if it rebounds, we could still book a profit before rolling potentially, uh, but we'll see what happens. Just going to play the probabilities as we always do. Next trade, opening trade in SPX. So we put on a new iron duck in this case with eight days to expiration, and uh, and, and so I'll get to. Uh, uh, I'll get to the, um, uh, I'll get to that here in a second. Um, let's go on to the next one first. Uh, next one was, uh, a rolling adjusting trade in Natty gas. So we rolled one set of our strangles from, uh, 20 days to expiration out to 48, kept the strikes the same. We were down to 20 days to expiration, and so we needed to roll out to the next cycle. We had two different sets of, of nat gases, so I'll go to the platform once we get to the second alert. Uh, next one was a closing trade in a, an SPX Iron Duck that we had put on. This was the very first one that we put on, and we ended up just uh, letting this one expire. Took the beak profit and um, and 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 booked that 160 bucks on that trade. <clears throat> And at that point, we're still holding our uh, SPX uh, with with seven days to expiration. So I'll get to the I'll get to that one here in a second as well. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in Nat Gas. So here is the second roll on our Nat Gas position. Uh, this one was down to 18 days to expiration. Then we rolled that out to 46. So now we've got both pieces out in the uh, December, what Toss calls the December cycle. So if we go to Natty Gas. 
Uh, you can see here, uh, this is kind of both of them put together. Remember, they share the three strike put because it, it is so deep in the money that we went ahead and just uh, share that for both sets. And so on the call side, they're very similar too, but we've got the 2.3 call and 2.35 call, uh, but this is both of them together. So just waiting for some more time to pass, waiting for some more theta to decay. Next trade, opening trade, we did a broken wing iron butterfly. And we did that in uh, Beyond Meat, B-Y-N-D. And we did that with eight days to expiration. And um, I, I talked about this broken wing iron butterfly strategy at the end of our iron duck part two. So if, if you missed that, it's kind of towards the end of part two. And, uh, and it's just a variation of an iron duck where we're putting the short strikes at the same strike. So if we go to Beyond Meat, uh, it's actually, after with the market up huge today, uh, surprisingly Beyond Meat down over 3%. And so when we put this on, uh, price has basically started up in this area somewhere and it's come down. So it's in our tent area, but we've got, uh, how many days do we have now? We've got seven. So, you know, over the course of the next week, we'll watch this theta decay. Hopefully it stays within our range and we'll close this out shortly before uh, the options expire. So that is the plan in Beyond Meat. Uh, now let's go on to the next trade. Next one was a closing trade in SPX. So this was our other iron duck. And, and we closed this one today. And the reason being is because with the strong movement in the market, uh, I mean, the price just ran way up the beak. And so instead of holding this for another five days, we just closed it out, took that full beak profit of 145 bucks and, uh, and look and look to redeploy that, that money into another iron duck, which we did uh, today as well. And so now we'll go to the platform. We did this with 14 days to expiration. With the market running higher, implied volatility contracting, if I enter on days like this, I like to typically go a little bit further out. So instead of going like seven days out, we went 14 days out. And, um, and so let's take a look at what that looks like. So if we go to SPX, um, and then uh, this is a trade that I put on from a, suggest from a uh, comment in the community. Uh, so that's not one of our alerts, but I'll talk about that here in a second too, actually, because it's, it's kind of interesting. Um, so this is our SPX Iron Duck. Let's set our slices back to the break even point. Uh, 1026 is the expiration here. So this is what it looks like. So we put this on, so it's pretty close to where we put it on. You see, we got a max profit of 650 bucks with a beak profit of 150. Remember, the beak profit is basically the credit you receive minus the width of the call spread. So the call spread is five points wide. We collected 650 as our max profit. So that's where the 150 comes from. 650 minus five equals 150, okay? So that's where that comes from. Now, the other thing I just wanted to point out on SPX here that I had checked initially was one of our members in the community said, hey, I, I was looking at this double calendar spread with the market running up and applied volatility contracting, putting on these weekly double calendars, just like we teach in the weekly income course. Now, what uh, what this member did was uh, they were basically selling the October 18th and buying the October 21st. So a little bit uh, more narrow spread between the different time frames than we than we do. However, if you look at this, I mean, look how flat the PL line is and look how big of a, a a max profit we've got over a thousand dollars on most parts of this peak um, and we're only risking you know a few hundred bucks per contract and so i put this in just to just to watch it so, and so i could discuss it today and what happens when you see something like this that looks so so favorable typically what happens is there's uh i haven't even looked but there, there's got to be some type of announcement or something going on next uh in these further dated options that's going to cause the premium to collapse or contract at least, and they're going to contract quicker than the front month, than the front week. And remember, when we're when we're putting on these double calendars, we're selling the front week because we expect them to contract faster than the back week, and we're putting on the back week because they create that defined risk risk scenario. And and, and but when you see a scenario like this that almost looks too good to be true. That typically means it is. So if you were to put this on on a stock 
right before earnings, you're going to kind of see a very similar type thing. And so um, we'll see what happens. I just put it on to watch it, and so I could I kind of and so I could kind of explain it better to this member and to the rest of the community. But I just wanted to kind of point that out, and and we'll uh, we'll follow that and and post more about that. I just want to show you what happens, you know, right now. And just for reference point, you know, we've got so it's right here the seven and the ten, seven days to expiration and ten days to expiration. Right now. You'll see the implied volatility on the seven-day options are right here at 14.92%, and then 10 days out is 13.87. So we'll see what happens to those options and the implied volatility over the next week, and uh, and it'll help give you a better idea of of the situation with this with this double calendar. All right, so hopefully that's helpful, or it will be once you kind of see what happens. <clears throat> Next trade, closing adjusting trade in KRE. So we had two different sets of short strangles on in KRE. Uh, on this one, we booked over 25% of max profit, and it was basically almost a straddle, and that's why we, we took profits earlier on this piece, and then we're still holding our other piece. So we'll, if we look at KRE, you'll see here's the one that we still have on. Uh, we took off the 52.53, and now we still have the 50.57. Price is sitting right here. So if we get a little bit more movement up and some more contraction, we'll probably book this one uh, next week as well, uh, as long as it doesn't run away from us in one direction or another. Next trade and final trade of the week is a rolling adjusting trade in Apple. So Apple has just been exploding higher and we've got a, uh, a long put vertical on. So we just rolled this to keep that short delta exposure in our portfolio. And where we're at right now is that we're at right at about two to one on our short delta versus our theta ratio. So we're in a good position. Uh, I'll tell you, boy, I mean, today does not feel good. When you have that kind of, when you have short delta on and, and the market rips higher like it did, uh, that does not feel good. Now, the good news is uh, it gave up in the very last, hour of the trading day gave up over uh, almost about half of the gains that it had on earlier. So that helped out a little bit. But when the S&P was at 55 points, that was a little brutal. Uh, but you got to stay mechanical. You know, again, this is it seems like a little bit of an overreaction as far as how this exploded higher uh, these last few days. But we'll see if there's some additional continuation or if this thing rolls over and dies. Uh, we'll be watching that next week. So those are all the alerts. Let's take out take a look at some of our other positions. I mentioned 6B. Oil making a big move higher today, almost 2.5%, which is good for the good guys. Uh, price is down here. You know, if it was going to continue running, we're going to have to roll our calls down, but it ripped back higher. So we're right back in line with where we need to be, just now waiting for some more time to pass and theta to decay. ES, we've got the long put vertical holding for that short delta exposure. Uh, need some downside to get back into range. In gold, we've got an iron condor, pretty well centered here. Let me make this a little bit easier to see, stretch this out. Um, and so price is pretty well centered here, just waiting for some more uh, time to pass before we do anything there. Natty Gas, I mentioned. Bonds, get a little whipsawed in bonds. They're coming back down. We came all the way back down into center, and now we're heading down towards the lower end of, the, uh, of our range. Uh, you can see it's, it's had a big move with the market ripping higher. Bonds have... Uh, gone lower. And so that's where we're at on our bond trade. If, if it continues lower or if it rips back up to the upside, I'd like to add on to this again. Uh, we're still battling back uh, to get back to profits in bonds. So uh, just on uh, in wait and see mode right now. Wheat up over 3% today, but still well within range on our iron condor. Uh, I mentioned Apple. I mentioned Beyond DE. Uh, this one moved out of our range here, so just looking for some downside to get back into our range on that one. Uh, and we'll and we'll do something with this next week, either roll or close it. This is still in October, and we're down to what seven days in October. Yeah, so we'll we'll address this one next week. DIA, we've got two sets of short call verticals. One's got three contracts, and it moved out of our range here today. And then the other one is still within range. Uh, but just looking for some more downside to benefit those. Goldman, oh man, this one was frustrating. I had a I had an order in 
uh, when when price was kind of down here to exit this and it's it just ripped higher on us never had a chance to get out again so just kind of in wait and hold mode uh, see if this can get back we'll we'll go ahead and roll this one or close it uh, next week as well because it's in october as well uh, IWM, we put on this position for some more short delta exposure, and price has moved up a little bit on us since we put that on. Uh, so again, just holding this for some short delta. IYR, we've got this iron condor. It's dead center, just waiting for some more profit before we do anything there. I mentioned KRE. QQQ, very similar to DIA, uh, just holding these two sets of short call verticals for that short delta exposure. Price is right here, you know, well within range. Uh, just waiting for some more downside to benefit those. SMH, uh, now we find ourselves all of a sudden with this at the upper end of the range again. And implied volatility contracting, but we will look to potentially add to this one uh, early next, next week, assuming implied volatility stays decent uh, by just adding a, a, another short strangle kind of centered around the current price. Uh, this is in November. So we've got 35 days in that cycle and then 70 in the next one. So we'll probably, we'll either do it in November or we'll wait another week before we add to this, uh, wait for these options to get down under the 60 day to expiration range. Uh, I mentioned SPX, SPY, we've got an iron condor here in, in SPY and uh, pretty well centered here. Um, and so not quite enough to take off yet, but we'll be looking at that next week. And then lastly, XLK, long put vertical, kind of same story. Uh, need markets to go down a little bit to get back into range on that piece. So those are all the alerts. Those are all the positions. Don't forget, Tuesday, Iron Duck Part 3. We'll see you then. Have a great weekend.